<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what paranormal or otherworldly experiences have you had that made you question reality? So I've always been kind of open to paranormal things but never experienced anything, but my wife is the complete opposite. She's not down with anything remotely spooky. So one night I wake up and one side of my room is almost completely black, but the other side is fine. I chalk it up to my eyes not adjusting, but after waking back up feeling like someone was watching me, I see multiple shadow figures right off to the side of my bed. Again, thinking I'm tripping, I try to roll over on my stomach face down and jokingly think to myself, nothing is there. Something breathes in my left ear, my wife is to my right. I think to myself, if you're actually there, do it three more times. Sure enough, I hear it breathe in my ear three more times. I about spit myself out and hit under the covers like a five-year-old. The next morning I tell my wife, and she tells me she saw the same thing. Worst case. She now believes that spooky shit can happen to anyone. My friend and I were walking down the street from our one day, in broad daylight, and suddenly a baseball hit me in the side. I start crying, we're looking around can't see anyone, the baseball is lying on the ground next to me. We continue walking, and we both instinctually turn around and watch as the ball lifts vertically in the air, then is tossed to the other side of the street to another neighbor's yard. We ran like hell, and no one believed us. But who would we be if we were 10 and 11? To this day, it's mind-boggling. There was a lot of other paranormal stuff that happened in that neighborhood, but it's too much to go into. When I was around 8 years old, I was spending the night with my grandparents. When I would stay over, I would sleep with my grandmother, and my grandfather would sleep in the second bedroom. We laid down, and the door was open. She always used to hang a bunch of dresses and purses on a hook on the back of the door, so it was relatively heavy to shut and latch closed. Also in front of the door was one of those square box fans, the really loud ones. We'd been lying there for about 10 minutes when the door slammed shut completely, everything fell off the back of the door, and the fan got knocked over. As a child, I, of course, started to freak out. She just told me that the dog did it and to go back to sleep, but the dog was already asleep next to her side of the bed the whole time. It still boggles my mind how that happened. But that house was very creepy, and a lot of odd things happened there. My grandma has seen three UFOs rise out of her woods. One confirmed by my uncle. I have seen one. It was just a normal night, and we were waiting out on the porch for my sister's friend's brother to come pick her up. We were chatting, and we noticed a star starting to get super bright. It's just over the tree line. Then the star we are all staring at almost instantly rockets upwards and comes to an immediate stop. Which was mind-blowing enough. Then the star continues to grow brighter, and then we notice it's getting larger and coming towards us. As one moves over the house at what I can only estimate to be about 1,000 or so feet up, we can see that it's actually three large lights facing down in a straight line with a row of chasing lights down the middle. It moved quickly but made absolutely no noise at all. I called my grandma, remembering she had seen some stuff like this before. In all the excitement, I couldn't even think to try and take a picture. I doubt my old Android phone could have captured anything like that with it being so dark anyway. So ever since I was a kid, I could see what seemed like black shadows. They would appear at the corner of my eye, and when I looked there, they would vanish. But sometimes I could see them very clearly if I blinked. I know this sounds weird, but if you blink right now, you may have an imprint of the lights, right? So, let's suppose the light is hitting a wall and there is nothing in front of it, no furniture, paintings, etc. If I blink, I can see this weird humanoid shape. It would be like a slender man with shorter and longer fingers. Actually, its height would vary based on how I looked at it. If I looked down and blinked, it would look like a toddler. If I looked up, it would be more than 7 feet. Yeah, I know, I'm not making any sense here, but I used to see this at night, before sleeping. If I blinked fast, I could see it move. It once moved just inches from where I was, and I, being a kid, decided to make a deal with it. If I left it alone, it would leave me alone. Soon we moved away, and this never happened again, but I can see stuff like that sometimes. When I was with my first serious boyfriend, I would often stay over at his house. The house itself was actually two houses that had had the dividing wall knocked down. There was one side of the house, specifically the upstairs hallway and my boyfriend's room, that made me feel very unsettled. I'd sometimes have terrible nightmares there and wake up screaming. One time I was dreaming that I was lying on a stone slab in the middle of a cave with lit torches and brackets all around the outside. A hooded figure was leaning over me or pinning me down, and I was screaming for help. I heard someone shouting get off her and then woke up. 
I was completely inconsolable with fear for well over an hour and had to sit downstairs with hot chocolate to calm down. My boyfriend eventually asked me about the dream and reluctantly told me his side of events. He said he woke up about 10 seconds before I started to scream, saw something holding me down, and started shouting at it to get off me. That's when I started screaming and woke myself up. I didn't stay in that house again for a long time. When his older brother moved out, my boyfriend moved into his room because it was bigger. I never once had a nightmare in that room. When my husband and I first moved into our house, one of the first quirks of our house was the squeaky floors. What was once annoying became routine, and we didn't notice it after a few months or so. Fast forward four years. We have a five-month-old baby asleep downstairs for the night, hopefully. We have memorized every squeak and creak to be able to appropriately navigate around the house without waking a fussy baby. There's one particular creak at the threshold to my office that I started to use as a sort of alert if someone came up behind me as my desk faced the back wall away from the door. I'm sitting at my desk, taking some much needed me time, when I hear the usual creak of the floor as my husband enters the room. As I turn around, I say, hey, do you? There was no one there. I turned back around, thinking the house had shifted, and I was embarrassed to speak aloud to no one. A few minutes pass, and I hear it again. I spin around in my chair, and nothing happens. I walk out into the hall, making the floor creak, to turn the light on. Back into the office, creak, and with a quick thought of duck that, about 30 minutes pass, and creak. I jump out of my chair and turn around to find an empty doorway and a fully lit hall beyond. So I say aloud what my mother once said when I was a kid, only friends and family are welcome here. All others must leave now, for we are protected by the light. Behind me on the desk, my shitty desk lamp slams down, breaking the escape key off my keyboard in the process. Now let me say that I'm not super religious and more just believe in having good intentions towards others. But that night, I prayed. To every god there could be, is, and ever was, and for divine protection over my home and my family. I prayed for hours. I've never done that before or since, but I can confirm that there have been no more incidents. When I was a teen, I was a very spiritual person and interested in Wicca, and still am. I had two good friends at the time, let's call them Perry and Jake. Jake had been having a lot of paranormal experiences recently, he had made a makeshift Ouija board, and while on his bus one day, he ended up contacting a ghost named A. A seemed benevolent, but me and Perry wanted to know more. I ended up getting an actual Ouija board for Christmas that year, and so me and my friends decided we would all get together and actually use it. We all went into my basement and set up the board, along with candles, a salt circle, quartz, and lavender, we couldn't get any sage bundles. We all put our fingers on the planchette and asked if anyone was there. Someone did respond. As we continued to talk with this ghost, who called itself T, we felt a growing dark energy begin to surround us. I felt like we should end the session, but we continued. We ended up getting the word proxy out, T was a proxy for something much darker. And then we heard a sound from the closet. Jake and Perry went in to investigate, and I stayed behind to not end the session without saying goodbye. A few seconds later, they came running out, screaming. Perry said that she had seen a black figure with white eyes and tiny pupils sitting in the fetal position in the closet. We all decided to end the session there. Afterwards, we go upstairs to get some holy water, my mom is Catholic, and when we come back, we find that something has thrown the board across the room, and the candles and lavender are strewn everywhere. The candles were out, thankfully, we quickly blessed the board with holy water and put it in my room, keeping the planchette in the basement. My friends have since seen T outside their windows, as well as a white figure with black eyes. We presume it is A, trying to protect us from T and the darker force. They eventually stopped, but I still get that same dark feeling whenever I go into my basement's closet. I have wanted to try to contact these spirits again for a while. If you have any idea if I should and what to do if I should try to, please let me know. This happened about 2008. To give some background, the part of Texas I live in was going through a pretty bad drought. So I was driving with my mom to a second-hand store we frequent. There are a few back roads we like to take to get there, it's not faster, but it's a quieter, more pleasant ride. We were driving with the windows open, it was hot but enjoyable. We turned onto the road that gets us to the shop, past a stand of trees, and then everything was just. Dead. The grass was the color of old hay, the trees had no leaves, and it was completely silent. Mom and I were shocked about how badly the drought had hit the street, but not particularly surprised per se, it really was a bad drought. The only thing odd about it was that everything felt dead, no birds, no animals, no people. If you had told me that the world was dead, I would have believed you. 
we commented back and forth and thought nothing of it after that. We got to the shop, found a few knickknacks, and started heading home down the same road. We got to the section of road that was so stricken, and it wasn't. The trees were wilted but green. The grass was definitely stressed, but alive. Dogs were in their yards. There were birds calling. It was the same as everywhere else. My mom and I stared at each other, and I just shot it. I don't know what happened. I have no reasonable explanation for it. I just know that it did happen, and we didn't get spooked until everything was back to normal. My mom dislikes talking about it and gets mad when I bring it up. Her acknowledgement of it is the only reason I know I didn't dream it. I just wonder sometimes, what happened there to make it feel so desolate? I was raised a Jehovah's Witness in the 1970s. The rhetoric was heavy on the devil and his demons and demonic activity, especially from acquiring used items like at a garage sale, I know, crazy, right? I first started to hear things moving in my bedroom at night and something tickling me in bed when I was maybe 6 or 7. Then we moved into a new house and I also heard things in my room at night. I used to sleep with cotton balls wadded in my ears so I couldn't hear it, usually it sounded like pens moving around in a cup on my desk. Once I heard a horse gallop through my bedroom. When I was almost 10 years old, one Sunday morning, I got up and started to make my bed. I had a bunk bed and slept on the bottom bunk. I had my bath towel hanging from the top bunk at the foot of the bed. When I got to the foot of my bed, the bottom edge of the towel was quickly lifted up and flipped onto the top bunk bed. I immediately jumped back in bed, buried myself under the covers, and started screaming. My parents didn't believe me at first when I started to tell them what I was experiencing, but this time they were concerned. I was scared to go into the house alone. I don't remember when the activity stopped, but it did. I am almost 50 years old and will always wonder if what I experienced was real or simply my imagination fed by cult or Bible nonsense. The things that I swear I saw were the towel being lifted up and an eye wink from a ceramic lamp in the shape of a little boy standing next to a propeller. That lamp is still in my mom's attic and makes the hair on my neck stand up. Did I really see these things? When I was about 14, it was late one night, and I was laying down in my bed at 2 in the morning playing on my phone, you know, the usual, when my little brother, 7 or 8 at the time, came in and told me he had a nightmare and wanted to sleep in my bed. So I let him jump in, and I rolled back over, facing away from him, continuing to play on my phone. After about 5 or 10 minutes, I get the strongest sensation of someone's watching me, and it's literally eating at me. I thought it was my little brother lying awake watching me look at memes or whatever, so I decided to act normal and play it cool. After a few seconds, I darted around in an attempt to scare him, but when I rolled over, he was out hard, and literally above his sleeping face was this perfect face of a scared woman. No body. No neck. Just a face right above my little brother's face, and just like that, it was gone. I didn't sleep for a few nights after that one. Back when I was really young, I saw silhouettes everywhere, though they weren't completely opaque and were kind of the color that you see when you close your eyes. Along with the silhouettes, I saw colors around people's heads that distracted the absolute shit out of me as an seven-year-old, I remember wondering how anyone could focus in gym class when the white walls made the colors really vibrant and impossible to ignore. I didn't tell anyone about it until I was about nine, because I thought it was totally normal and people just walked around the silhouettes and ignored the colors. One day one of the silhouettes stayed put in my room and just sat there while I slept. It really freaked me out and I couldn't get it to go away, so I called my mom and told her to make it go away. This is when she learned that apparently I had these problems. Instead of taking me to like, a therapist. She told me I was special and these were all ghosts. She gave me a homemade crucifix, she is extremely religious, and told me to be brave because they couldn't hurt me as long as I had this. For the next few years until I was 12, I was constantly terrified to sleep in my room and I just saw more around constantly. They would block my way up the stairs and stood in front of the bathroom. My mom always asked what I saw and tried to convince me some were angels and some were demons. She took me to church every Sunday and kept asking me what I saw constantly. It mainly came to a climax when one night one stood right next to my bed and blocked me in, and breathed, slowly. For hours. Really really loudly. Like it was right in my ear even though it was standing right above me. I spam called my mom that night to try to wake her up and help me. She came on the 27th call and I was losing my ducking mind and crying. I remember when she walked right through the breathing silhouette did I start to doubt everything. Only a few incidents like that happened after that. I still saw them constantly but after seeing my mom walk through them without anything happening, I realized I could too. After my breakdown my mom took me to a children therapist and I was diagnosed with a major anxiety disorder, though I stopped seeing the therapist before I could get any other diagnosis. 
Basically I think I was so stressed out as a child I had hallucinations, or at least something of the sort. I'm glad my mom didn't convince me I could actually see ghosts, because then I would have grown up to be kind of a weirdo. I grew up not really caring either way about God, the afterlife, and all of that. I also saw what looked like residual appearances. I always just attributed it to it being on a different plane, and some people can see past the wall that separates us. I can't explain it well, but science, okay? Well, I was with my now husband, going to visit his parents for the first time. They lived in this huge yellow Victorian house that was over 100 years old, some bigwig back in the day built it for his wife. Cool, but old is old, it doesn't mean anything. Well, we're in bed, and suddenly this piercing wail cuts through the room. I look over, my so is asleep. Okay, it must have been a dream, silly me. I lay back down, and it happens again. He has other family members that were also staying the night, so I was trying to remember if anyone had a baby. As I'm trying to remember, this weird gray cloud thing started to form into a human shape. It was a woman in a plain dress. It was a light color, maybe white, but I couldn't be sure. She's holding something, and I see it's a bundle of blankets. Oh, okay, weird. Then her mouth opens and she wails, and it's a horrible, sad sound. She looks at me and walks towards me, and I hear, please, lady, help my baby, please. WTF. I'm terrified now. She gets closer and stretches out her arms with this bundle in them, and the blanket falls away. I wanted to scream and throw up at the same time. It was a baby that looked like its head had been crushed in. Bone and thinks, and what I think might have been blood, remember she's grey, and I think I might have whimpered. Then I feel my so moving around, and I turn to see him awake. He looks confused, looks at me, and asks, what is that smell? Is that blood? Did someone get hurt? I slowly turn back thinking she's going to be right up in my face. She's gone. I didn't smell anything, so I said that, and we just went back to sleep. Well, he did. My mind was going one billion miles a minute trying to explain what just happened. Next morning, we're in the kitchen having breakfast, and one of the other family members asks, did someone get hurt last night? I heard this awful wail several times. Oh yeah, that's Sally. The story is that her husband was tired and angry about the baby's crying and just threw him against the wall. Nope. Nope. I don't know what it was or if it was just my imagination. I was opening one day, so I had to leave for work at 5 in the morning, so it was still dark out. It was pitch black, and I was keeping an eye out for deer as I made my way down the road. I drove around a corner, and there's this house right after it. Well, just past that, movement caught my eye, and I slowed down, thinking it was a deer. What I actually saw, or what I thought I saw, was a pale white dog-like thing that was the size of a large dog with no fur and just skin and bones. It seemed almost translucent. My heart skipped a beat, and I sped up to drive past it. It was heading behind the house, and I didn't see it in my rearview mirror when I checked again. My girlfriend doesn't know anything about a ghost dog or anything similar around where we live. I haven't seen it since. So my sister and I were doing a normal relaxing drive up at the local park. Now this park is the entire forest. So outside the park are a few abandoned cabins, a few houses, and neighboring neighborhoods. We were driving around the abandoned cabins. We began to drive past the tree house. The house is just a cabin with a giant tree going straight through the middle of the entire house. The house has a small shed to its side and a shed behind the other shed back in the woods. The second shed back in the woods is about 15 or 20 feet back. Keep that in mind. Now some backstory. The town I live in seems extremely nice and peaceful. But people who live here and actually know what happens know that it's actually a ducking cluster for supernatural events at night and when you are alone. There are tons of stories from people here. Back to the story. We were driving past the house, and I looked at the shed. I jokingly said to my sister, there's the crackhead house. As we pasted the shed. But I didn't really finish my sentence because I screamed. There was a large thing just standing in the shed. It seemed to be too tall for the doorway. And kind of kneeling over some of the broken roof that fell. I could tell that this thing was wearing some black robes. And the robes seemed to come from something on its head. Which was pure white. But I couldn't quite see what it was because my sister looked over because of my scream, saw the thing as well, and took off. So we sped down the hill in the car. We both got the courage to go see the thing again because we wanted to know what the duck we saw. We went around the same way we had gone originally. My sister was holding her phone over and recording, sadly, before anyone asks, the video somehow became corrupt the day after the incident. So I was making a slight joke of this incident as we passed. 
We heard the thing in the second shed back in the woods, but it was now staring straight at us. My sister and I both screamed, and she hit the gas faster than the last time. We got to the bottom of the hill in, like, three seconds. Now remember the shed in the back? I'd like 15 feet back. So I look back and there it is, crisscross in the middle of the road. I screamed, and my sister spun around the corner, and we drove home. Now about the video my sister took, we got home and reviewed it instantly on her laptop. My sister's editing skills had come in handy. She zoomed in and swore to God Almighty. This thing had a deer skull on it. The skull was so clean. But the antlers looked barely attached by what looked like brown threads. The eye sockets are what scared me the most. It looked like an unpure, utter void. For some reason. We both go check on the Wendigo on random days. It's so strange. We never see it, we just drive past the house, see nothing, and then leave in contempt. I don't know why my sister checks on it. I check on it because, to be honest, it makes me feel safe that it could be gone. I got two. On Halloween night, I was driving along a river in town in super foggy conditions. Something ran across the road in front of us. I could only see the bottom half, and it looked like human legs running backwards like an ostrich. Really weird. Friends, we say it was some urban legend called the donkey lady. The other one was when I was hanging out with my friend late at night, like at 2am we were just playing video games and talking shit one of the things we talked about was La Chusa, which is another urban legend of a demonic owl which that swoops down and takes you away to be eaten after you whistle three times in the dark. Anyway, I had to go outside later to get something from my car, and my friend decided to prank me. He waited until I was at my car, about 30 feet from the front door, and from the front door he whistled, knowing it would freak me out. He whistled a second time. Then a third at the exact moment he ended that third whistle, an utterly terrifying, loud screech, imagine a car burning out really loud, happened right above me. I, scared as hell, looked at my friend, hoping that he made that noise, but his face was like he saw a ghost. I ran as fast as I possibly could back inside, and he was freaking out as much as me. We ended up doing some research, and it most likely was a barn owl that heard a whistle and thought it was a mouse or a rodent. But what freaked me out was that our experience was exactly in line with what the urban legend is, aside from being killed, lol, and also that we were joking about that urban legend like 30 minutes prior. There were a lot of abandoned roads where I grew up, it was a small town where a lot of people started building before the economy went to shit in 2007, thus leaving a bunch of abandoned, half-constructed houses and empty, half-built roads leading to dead ends. It was the perfect place to drive to when I first got my license to go smoke some weed with buddies. We were in my car hanging out on an abandoned road when my car shut off, turning the lights off completely. We were in pitch darkness. I held my breath and hoped the car hadn't died on me. I turned the key, and the car started right up and flashed the lights on to the dead end ahead. A man dressed in a very old school suit and top hat was standing there with a briefcase. We were in the middle of nowhere, there were no houses or anything for miles. There were six of us stuffed in this car. We all saw him. We all screamed. I've never put a car in reverse so fast. By the time I adjusted myself to back out, he was gone. When I was only four years old, I became afflicted with night terrors, the full-on, wake up soaking the bed with sweat and screaming kind. It continued every night for years. I noticed quickly that it followed a pattern. I would be doing normal things with my family, if I looked away or blinked, they'd disappear, I would hear heavy footfalls coming closer, and lastly, I would be chased by what I call the ghost. Not very original but I was young. Like I said, these continued for years, but I started to notice other things as well. When I was laying down to sleep, I would hear things moving in the room, but when I looked, no one was there. It kept escalating. I would hear heavy breathing in my ear and even feel the warmth of the breath. I would turn, and there was nothing. Soon I would wake up from my night terrors, and my blanket would be neatly folded back over my face. I would ask my parents and brother if they did it, but they all denied it was them. One night, I saw a figure walk by my door. It had the body of a human and the head of a dog. The thing was, it was so dark in my room that I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. It was something darker than black. It all culminated one night while I again lay there, waiting to sleep. I felt something cold and hard grip my ankles and drag me off of the foot of my bed. My parents stereotypically said I was imagining it all. But I was mad. This thing had the balls to come into my world and try to scare me. I was 14, hopped up on puberty, and ready to kick some ass. I had my night terror like normal, except this time instead of running, I turned around. I saw this weird little alien thing like a cross between the aliens from signs and the typical gray men. It looked shocked, 
and I channeled all my anger at something that was worthy of a man's full wrath. I beat the SHT out of that thing. I mean, it was a bloody, pulpy pile of guts when I was done. I never had another night terror or visit from that thing. I've also been able to lucid dream from that point on. I also have dreams of the future. Usually, a scene that means nothing but happens around a life-changing event for me. As much as I try to be a major skeptic about these things, there are two incidents that really stick out in my mind. Here's the one that made me question reality. The house my family and I lived in when I was a child was very tall, and my room had a massive window. When I looked outside, I could see the backyard of the house next door, and it was massive. Right at the end was this type of garden with statues of elves and an old fountain-like fixture stuck on the ground that was very old. This house was empty for the majority of the time we lived on this street, as the lady who lived there had gotten really old and had been moved into a nursing home. Slowly, I realized that sometimes when I would look out my window to the yard, the elves had been moved, sometimes they would have their backs turned to me, and other times they would be looking directly at my window. It was so weird, but not terrifying. I told my parents and my sisters and made them come up the stairs, and they all said the elves had their faces turned away. This happened for many months, I believe. I swear they were sometimes facing my window, and I still have a mental image of their stupid grins. Anyway, one afternoon it was raining, so I was playing in my room. I remember this distinctly because I had just encountered a rare Pokemon in my red version, Chansey, I believe, and I failed to catch it. I was very annoyed, so I sat on my bed and looked out the window. I noticed a man standing right next to the elves in my neighbor's backyard. He was wearing a long black coat and a black top hat. He had on no shoes. That's how distinctly I remember this image, and he was looking right at my window and at me, he had the same stupid grin as the elves. He terrified me, his face was so weird looking it was almost grey. I screamed and ran downstairs, making my mom come up and check. She couldn't see anyone, and by that time, neither could I. I only saw him that one time, but the image hasn't been erased from my mind. We moved to another house later. Well, there was the time I was sitting on my doorstep with a friend who lived around the corner from my house. It was nearly 2 AM, and we were having a smoke before he went home and I went to bed. We were talking, and I heard a faint siren noise, like emergency services, but it was different from the fire truck, ambulance, or police sirens. I asked do you hear that? And he said, the weird siren? A few seconds later, we saw the blue lights being reflected off fences and cars. Now it was a police car, and it zoomed past us from right to left, and I immediately knew something was wrong. We both stood up, quickly walked to the end of my house's pathway onto the street, looked left, and there was nothing, no sound, no lights, no old-timey police van. It took me a maximum of 10 seconds from seeing the car to walking to the end of my pathway. Now less than 50 meters from my house was a roundabout that had recently been erected, there were, and currently still are, plans to make a new road going through two industrial areas where factories had recently been demolished and the land sold to developers to make housing estates, and although the roundabout was installed, only the turnoffs for the other roads had been made, and they were fenced off, so you could either continue going straight or turn around and come back the way you came, there were no other side roads for the next 200 meters. It literally just vanished into thin air. We stood there for a few seconds, not understanding what just happened. We discussed the oddness of the siren, the fact that it was a car from about 30 to 40 years ago, and that it had vanished moments after seeing it. I bring it up to him occasionally, and he gets flustered and doesn't like to talk about it, probably because he cannot rationalize it. To this day, I have no idea if we witnessed a time slip or had a shared hallucination. So, this was about 7 years ago, but I was staying at my girlfriend's house at the time. Her family owned every property around this tiny little lake in the White Mountains. It was a great trip with her parents, my best friend, and her sister. The first three days were awesome. Drinking, shooting skeet, kayaking, etc. Drinking and the like. So everybody starts to head out because of jobs. So I go to start up my trusty rust wagon, and the things I started were done right then and there. Happy to stay a bit longer, we waved goodbye to our friends and called AAA, American Automobile Association. At this point, we were not worried, while every other person within a 5 mile radius in the White Mountains just hit that dusty trail. Now, we called pretty late in the day, so we weren't all that surprised when AAA wasn't able to get out to us. Day 1, we pretty much just played, kayaked a bit, and shot some bows and arrows, all the while calling AAA periodically. I forgot to mention that the only phone that worked up here was their house phone, in the White Mountains, they will snort your service. Anyhow, they were really vague on the phone but as night rolled in, they said they had a guy on his way but about two hours out. 
So we waited, and then the storm clouds took over the sky. This isn't hyperbole either, random monsoons like rain and thunder so the time comes when the guy should be getting close. So we grab our bags and hilariously dysfunctional dog and head to the car. Also, the car was a few clicks from the house, 100 meters or so. Now we're in the car, and there's nothing but a torrential downpour banging on the hood. That loud ass rain several inbreds bark, and I decide to run as far as I can to read to see if I can flag the dude down. I abruptly grabbed my largest machete and an equally gargantuan flashlight and took off into the dark like a coked up chimpanzee. This was a long road. I reached the end, about 1.2 miles, where I could see the network of roads leading to us with clarity, and nothing. Like pitch black. No headlights, no magical school bus just black. It was at the time of this thought that I heard the first loud howl. Remembering this was not my hometown and that there are frickin' grey wolves up here, I took back to the car like some literally lit my ass on fire. As I ran, feeling somewhat cool, the howls grew in frequency and proximity, which relinquished my ego with haste. Out of breath and ready to fight like Tarzan with a pack of wolves, I arrive at the car. Looking like a wildman with a machete, I flung the car door open, which was promptly met with the shrill scream of my girlfriend as her dog jumped onto my chest. I just screamed get your shit, while wrestling her dog off me. We got back in and couldn't get a hold of AAA again that night. Of course. The next day, we awoke to an eerie and thick fog cast over the lake. Kayaking was the obvious choice. We ate and headed out into the gloom with nothing but the sound of the water on our paddles. We had been paddling around for about 15 minutes when I heard, what is that? As GF pointed across the lake at my uncle's house, we had been there a few days before. Mind you, no one but us is on this mountain. At first, it looked like a sheet, a long white sheet on a branch. And that's what I told her. Then it looked at me. As we were edging closer to the shore, it was standing on this freaking thing. I looked right over. It appeared to be like a grim reaper type figure, but all white. I couldn't see a face, it seemed to have a hood. We sat there, just having a staring contest with Dean Kuntz's wet dream, and it abruptly shifted to step closer. It moved slowly and even kind of peacefully, in a dreadful sort of way, until it was next to a beachside clothing rack in her uncle's backyard. As this thing stood perfectly next to the clothing rack, I could see it coming to about where its waist would be. I was at this place a few days before, and I remember almost smashing my eye on its corners. This white thing looked about 10 frickin' feet tall. At this point, my witchy and stupid girlfriend at the time asked if we should get closer, to which I replied, bitch you crazy? And began paddling back. A few hours later, we get a hold of AAA to find out more great news. The AAA guy they sent out, well, they haven't heard from him. That night was spent pounding mojitos and taking note of the household shotguns. I eventually had a friend pick up the part and drive it out to us, but it remains the creepiest and most otherworldly experience I've had. Well, during the day at least. It was still a great vacation, though. So I have a huge dog. My boy is easily 80 centimeters tall at his shoulder, and still growing. Poor thing is still getting growing pains at a year old. He's a brave boy. He likes to take long walks and explore, and when he doesn't like something, he either growls or barks, depending on how far the bad thing is. Humans get barked at. Other dogs get ignored. Animals, like birds, rabbits, and other such critters that sometimes wander out of the woods and onto the huge field behind my house, get barked at. Now I live in the country, right by a small village. We have street lights, but the closest one near my house ends right across the street on a T-section, which basically means that while my house and a little bit of the road get illuminated, none of the field does and only like 10 or 20 meters of the road both ways from my house does. Normally, that's not a problem when I go to take him for his evening walk, as I either go by the light from the moon or I grab a torch. Well, that night the moon was hidden, and I couldn't be bothered with a torch as it was cold outside and I didn't want to freeze my hands more than I was already going to. Bad move. When we get outside, we hear a distant bark or two, but it's half-hearted and quickly stops. The first sign that something is off is that there are countless dogs around that people keep for security, pest control, or just as pets that like to bark a lot. The silence is eerie, but like 50 meters down the road, there's another house that is like three or four dogs. They always bark when we walk by. That night? Nothing. Not even a peep, not so much as a rustle, from that direction. Now I'm getting kind of on edge, but I'm not one to freak out over some silence, and my dog still needs walking. We continue on, and he pees and sniffs around, then suddenly looks out across the field and partly towards the forest. My fear spiked at this, but I was willing to continue on but my dog decided that that night, continuing further from home was a resounding no. Whatever he saw out there on the field, I saw nothing as it was too dark, 
had made him nervously jump back and around a little before just turning to go home. I'd sped up a little at that point, but my dog still needed to do some more business, which he did, and just as he got done, he noticed something on the field again. He once again did that nervous jumping as I tried to search for what the hell he was seeing, this time knowing for sure it was either on the field or in the forest as my dog wasn't looking anywhere near where the roads were. After a second or two of this eerie, black silence, my dog turns towards home and sets off at a trot, clearly signaling he wants home but not wanting to end up tugging me along as he knows that's a no. I fully agreed with his decision, seeing as my instinct was telling me being outside was not a good idea, and turned to run home, my dog happily leading the way at a small gallop. I don't know what was out there that night, but it seems to be gone now as he doesn't have that reaction anymore, so yay? Going outside in the dead of night still makes me uneasy, though, as I keep remembering that night and being unable to see what was out there. My mom and I have always been very spiritually aware. We pulled out the Ouija board and began asking questions. It kept saying, mom's boyfriend's name, is evil. They had been together for 10 years, and he acted as a father figure to my brother and me. Several months later, he tried to kill my mom while my brother and I were away. My mom walked away from the event, and he went to prison. While he was in prison, we had a huge windstorm caused by a hurricane in the south that left us without any power for a week. We spent our nights by candlelight and played board games. One night we pulled out the Ouija board again, but this time the board kept saying fire and candle. My mom looked around, there was no fire. Then our smoke alarm went off. Mom asked the spirit to shut off the alarm, but it again said no and fire. My mom got up and went into the bathroom and found a candle that had melted down so far, the wax had gotten everywhere, and it would have caused a fire. That spirit protected our family that night. Lastly, my mom, brother, and I have all seen the same dark entity in the house at different stages in time. We hadn't told one another about seeing him until several years ago, which is why we know we weren't fabricating what we saw. One day when I was visiting the house, long after I moved out, I went into my old room, now my brother's room, and as I shut the door, I saw the figure out of the corner of my eye. My brother had seen him standing in the room and heard the figure say his name. My mom saw the same figure in the backyard one night after everything happened with her boyfriend. The house is most definitely haunted. Believe it or not, this is just part of the story. We have had so many crazy interactions while living there. When I moved in with my now husband when we were first dating, his home always had a really weird, dark vibe to it, and I had some really creepy experiences. Mostly when I was alone. The first was when we were sat together in his front room watching TV, it wasn't even late, maybe around 6 p.m., and we heard a crashing sound. So he went to find out what it was, went into the bathroom, and a packet of disposable razors was on the floor, some even had their heads ripped off. The second was when I was alone, at 2 or 3 a.m., while he was at work. The male cat was outside the bedroom door and wouldn't stop crying, so I went out to see what the problem was. The hallway light was behind me, so I could see my shadow on the wall in front, but as I was walking out the doorway, a pair of shadow arms, that weren't mine, appeared around my shadow. It scared me so much that I grabbed the cat and ran back into bed. The third time was after we moved into our new home. We were lying in bed laughing and joking, and I felt something hit the bottom of the bed. My husband never felt it. The fourth time was after we'd had an argument and I walked off into the kitchen. I felt something hit me in the head, and as I turned around, a bottle cap fell out of my hair. Nobody was in the room but me. Another time, my engagement ring went missing, and we spent days searching the entire house for it. We bought a new one and didn't really think about it again. Fast forward about 8 months, and my husband is cleaning the tops of the kitchen cupboards and finds it there. So there's been a couple of times, but they seem to gravitate around my husband. I'm pretty sure he has some sort of attachment. My coworker claims something is attached to me. I don't think that, but I have seen some things. The first big memory was as a small child. My parents' house was built into a hill in the country. My siblings and I had our rooms in the basement. Across the hall, directly from my room, was the storage slash furnace slash water heater, etc. room. It was completely underground and had no windows, so even during the day, if the lights were out, it was pitch dark. Since my siblings and I were so young, there was one of those night lights in the hallway between our rooms. I woke up suddenly and immediately had this sick to my stomach feeling, and all my hair was standing on edge. That's when I saw it. Just outside the light, coming out of the storage room, is the dog. I should mention that we didn't have a dog. Jet black, pointed ears with a build like a German shepherd, and these jet black eyes that weren't glowing in the light like a dog's eyes should. It was staring at me, we made eye contact, and I was frozen with fear. 
I built up the nerve to pinch myself, thinking I was having a nightmare. I was definitely awake. I reacted to the pain, and the dog moved. It was reacting to me. I was beyond terrified. I muttered, what do you want? And it began slowly walking into my room. I screamed and heard my brother jump out of bed, his door flying open. The dog looked that way and wheeled around into the storage room. Almost out of sight. My brother came into my room, and the dog backed out of sight. I had my brother check the room, but he found nothing. Fast forward almost a decade, and a friend and I were out hunting coyotes on the neighbor's property. My body and I ate chatting, it was a slow day. Suddenly, my friend's face goes white. He is super focused on the woods on the hill across from us, about 300 or so yards away. He slowly pulled his scope up and swallowed hard. I asked what was up, and he asked, have you ever seen an all-black coyote? I said, sure, but only on the internet. This one's, different. I don't know, man, it's like, it's like he's staring at my eyes through the scope. I kind of chuckled. Whatever, dude, let's check this guy out, I said, pulling up my scope. My heart skipped a beat, I couldn't believe it. It was the dog, and he was staring at us. The moment I found him in the scope, he sat and stared. I can't explain it but it felt so wrong. Then he just walked off. We thought about leaving, but were too intrigued. I told my friend about what happened all those years ago, as a kid, I assumed it was a dog. Now, it just seems so, generic? Like I remembered, but not a dog, coyote, or wolf. I just can't put my finger on it, and neither could my friend. We spent our entire lives in the outdoors, hunting, hiking, etc. As it got dark, we made the long trek back through the snow. As we were walking, my friend said, what the duck? There, up ahead, sat the black dog. We named him that after the movie, later I'd learn the history of the black dog online, gad we known we wouldn't have been so careless. We shined a light on him, and his eyes didn't glow. They should have glowed. He stood up, stared at us, and slowly walked off. He was kind of always around, he would show his face from time to time, and bad stuff would always happen, accidents, injuries, and even deaths. I wish I was making this up. I swear I'm not, it's been experienced by a few others with me. The last experience was in 2020, and I now live almost 30 minutes drive from where I had last seen the black dog years before. I'm driving home from work on the third shift. I'm tired, and work was stressful. I had been hit by a truck and hurt pretty badly about two weeks before, was involved in a separate car accident, and my grandfather was dying slowly. I was thinking about it all, and I got that familiar chill. How could I be being watched in a moving vehicle? I looked into the field beside the road, and there he was. Running. This made my heart damn near stop. The black dog legend is that truckers would see the dog, and death would normally follow. Later that day, I was advised of my grandfather's passing away, around the time I saw the dog. That cemented in my mind that this was real. I always made excuses for the things I saw and experienced. The people around me when these things happened did not take them lightly. Maine is not the creepiest thing I've seen, but definitely the oddest. Odd and scary enough to one friend that he will never return to my parents' home. Who knows? There is probably still an explanation. I was on route home from a 12-day vacation. Driving a pickup pulling a fifth-wheel RV. It was about 11 p.m. on a Saturday night in late July, and I was about two hours from home, trying to make it home that night. I was in a very rural area where there is almost no one living on about a 20-mile stretch of road. There is only one combination gas station, tavern, and motel here, and it's heavily wooded on both sides. It is county maintained and fenced at the tree line. The shallow ditches had been mowed, and the grass was about 6 inches high. I only saw a couple of cars on this whole stretch of road. I was going only about 50 miles per hour because it is heavily populated with deer. I saw movement ahead, so I immediately slowed more. As I passed, I saw it was a young woman. Tall, fit brunette, wearing a crop top, pleated skirt, and stockings. Walking with the traffic, just off of the shoulder. I immediately thought car trouble, though I had not passed a disabled car, or a fight with my boyfriend or driver, and I was put out. I pulled to the side of the road, hit the emergency flashers, and grabbed the flashlight to check on her. When I got to the rear of the camper, there was no one. I looked around for her. There was no way she would have reached the back of the RV before I did, so she could not have been hiding there. She could not have hid in the ditches, as the grass was too short. She could not have made it to and over the fence without a light in the little time it took me to get to the rear of the RV. I looked where she had been walking, and I saw no sign that the dew on the grass had been disturbed. I drove the rest of the way home with the hair on the back of my neck standing on end. 
my family owns a cabin deep in one of the boonies of Pennsylvania, Potter County, to be exact. I have had a few strange experiences in the many years we've been going there for vacations. When I was about six or seven, I was trying to fall asleep on an air mattress in my parents' bedroom. It was probably about 11 or 12 at night when suddenly a glowing orb appeared on the side of my dad's bed. It stayed still for a second, then suddenly started dancing around. I didn't know what to make of it, so I just turned over to the other side and fell asleep. I woke up later that night to find it gone, and I haven't seen it since. A few years later, it was broad daylight, and I was alone in my parents' room, doing nothing in particular. Out of nowhere, a female voice whispered my name right in my ear. Again, I didn't know what to make of it, so I left the room to make sure nobody had called for me or anything and everyone else was just minding their own business. No one was paying me any mind. Once I was a teenager, I decided to stop sleeping in that room. I didn't want any more creepy things happening, and my dad's monstrous snoring didn't help motivate me either. But it wasn't just the room that was haunted, my entire family has discovered that the whole area has some strange energies residing in it. My dad has seen the face of a dead relative appear in the fireplace, my brother and cousin have seen multiple orbs in a nearby field, another cousin saw an unexplained flash of light in the corner of her bedroom once, and there is an entire book dedicated to weird and paranormal stuff that's been going on for decades in Potter County. So far, the last weird thing that happened was a couple of years ago. I woke up in the middle of the night, sleeping on the living room couch this time, to see a few tiny, flashing lights appear at random around the room. They were like pinpoint size, but they still freaked me out. Especially since my dog was obviously scared of them, too, given the fact that she was whining in fear. And they couldn't have been fireflies or anything, because it was autumn, and the light they gave off didn't look anything like a fireflies. Those are my stories, and I'm sticking to them. I used to work the night audit shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., at a historical hotel. It used to be a big plantation house, but it was converted into a cute little hotel. They still honor the old mistress of the house, there's a big painting of her still hanging in the lobby, and they tried to keep as much of the original furnishing as they could. People said that she's still there and that things would sometimes happen on my shifts. You'd feel like you were being watched some nights, the chandelier in the lobby would swing wildly, the radio would change channels or turn on or off on its own, things would go missing and then seemingly reappear for no reason, doors to vacant rooms would be unlocked and propped open, lights in the kitchen or ballroom would turn on after I turned them off, and vice versa. Her old master bedroom was converted into our only suite, and while it wasn't booked often, she'd get upset when people were in there and activity would spike. You could sometimes hear footsteps when nobody was in there too, the suite was directly above the lobby. I never sensed anything malicious, though, and she never did anything to harm people. I was bored very often, and I'd talk to her sometimes. I'd feel like I was being watched, and I'd just be like, hey, how are you tonight? Or if there was someone in the suite and activity spiked, I'd reassure her that they'd be gone soon and tell her their checkout date. I probably looked crazy, but nobody else was awake at the time, and it was kind of fun. I've always been open to the paranormal, but I never had any kind of experience myself, so it was cool to finally have that. I like to think she liked me. I went to visit my uncle's legal marijuana farm out of state with my husband. The land had multiple houses and places for workers to trim and sleep, basically, they lived there while working. On my third day there, Two of the female workers who had been sharing a room completely freaked out. One of them claimed that a blonde pale woman was standing outside their window, just staring blankly inside with her eyes wide and her head cocked to the side. Everybody at the farm had dark hair, she apparently was so scared that she kept squeezing her eyes shut and reopening them to see the blonde woman still there, but her face was cocked in a different direction at every blink, so she ran out, leaving her roommate, who was asleep. The roommate said she had a terrible nightmare of herself getting molested and beaten and woke up to bruises all over her body. I remember seeing everybody looking at her in disbelief because she seriously had small bruises all over her arms and legs. People were telling her that she had had a bad trip, but she was crying and begging to be taken to the hospital, so the person who hired her took her. She never came back for her things, once she was medically cleared, she called family to pick her up. Our last night at the farm was our fifth night. We were preparing to leave the farm and it was dark out. For some reason, my husband had left my side to look for my uncle, and my aunt and cousin had disappeared into the dark. In one of the barns with lights, I saw my cousin walking into the building, so I went to let him know we were leaving. I get in there and there's nobody. I walk through the barn and exit on the other side, and I see my husband standing next to my cousin by our car. We get to my uncle's house, and he wanted to do a small barbecue for our last night visiting him, and there he tells us about all the ghost stories from his farm and stuff he's personally seen. 
but the thing that creeped me out the most was that poor girl with the bruises, you know? When they started passing the joint around, I skipped it and decided to sleep first. You know that feeling when something's brushing against your leg but you're too tired to swat it away? Yeah, I thought maybe there was a spider or something under the blanket, so I was like, if I'm tired as SHT, I'll deal with you tomorrow, spider. Then, as I drifted off into sleep, the bed shook. It literally felt like somebody was at the foot of the bed, rocking the mattress. Instantly, I opened my eyes. Stupid move. The room was pitch black, but I could make out a silhouette standing by the desk. Nope. My husband was sleeping next to me, facing the wall, so I casually rolled over him and kept my eyes shut. I'm now between my husband and the wall, and my heart is beating like crazy for the first time in a long time while I'm in bed. I could feel it staring at me, and it felt as if all the hairs on my arms and neck were up, like my body was on high alert. This went on for what seemed like forever, and I tried to force myself to sleep. Every time I would start to doze off, the foot of the bed would rock, and I'd mentally be awake again. Never once would I open my eyes because there have been too many scary movies where something's in your face. Then, I heard my husband whisper my name, hey tea leaves, and I opened my eyes and thought, what the f has been awake the whole time? Nope. That was a trap because my husband was still snoring beside me. That's when I saw a figure above us, and my ears started to ring, so I balled up in a fetal position until morning. When my husband woke up, he told me he had a scary dream that he was being chased at my uncle's farm by a wailing woman. We packed up our stuff and went home without looking back. Once we finally got home, I stripped my clothes off to shower, and before getting in, my husband stopped me and told me to look in the mirror. I had small bruises on my arms and legs. My partner and I were driving down a steep hill in my city, with myself in the passenger seat. Traffic was fairly busy as usual, as it was only about 8 p.m. and the road is one of the main routes for commuting out of the city. I'm just kind of enjoying the journey, as the car was nice and warm, and I was looking forward to dinner when I got home. I noticed out of the front window and to the right that somebody was about to walk in front of oncoming traffic. I panicked and shouted out loud to my partner that someone was about to get hit and potentially thrown into our path. But at the moment they were about to be hit by a small white van, their top half disappeared, but their legs were still walking into the road. It is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my 32 years of being alive. The legs took a few steps forward, they weren't solid, as I could see the vehicle's headlights through them, yet they weren't completely transparent. So strange. I had consumed no alcohol or drugs, not even a paracetamol, and I wasn't tired or stressed either. To this day, I won't go on that stretch of road. This is a story of my mom from the late 70s and early 80s, when she was a little girl. Mum, my aunt, and my grandma and granddad were on a trip in Scotland near the Isle of Skye. They were driving on a main road and came to a little town. I don't remember what it was called, but all the houses there were small, one-story white houses with straw roofs, like something from the 1700s. There were no cars, and everyone looked dirty and was wearing dirty old clothes that were like what peasants from the 1700s would wear. As they drove into the village, the road turned from tarmac to a dirt and pebble track. All the people in the village gathered around the car as Grandad drove slowly through, and people began to gather around the car as it drove slowly, all holding pitchforks, iron rods, and other objects, and began bowing to the car and shouting things that sounded like prayers as it drove through. People who weren't gathering around were staring, screaming, and shouting as they drove through. My mom remembers that she and her sister pulled faces and stuck out their tongues, and they drove through. They assumed there was some ceremony going on and thought nothing of it except that it was strange. A little down the road, they stopped for a quick break to admire the scenery. My granddad was outside looking through his binoculars when my mom remembers him suddenly screaming get in the car, get in the car now. In a voice that mom could only describe as terror. Well, they all got in the car, and my mom remembers seeing this figure. He was in a long purple coat, had long blonde hair, and had a kind face. The scary thing was that he didn't seem to be standing. He was hovering within a few centimeters of the ground, and when you looked at him, he didn't seem quite there. Like he was half there, half not. Transparent almost. My granddad peeled out and was at full throttle, approaching like 30 miles per hour, but he was still there. At my mom's window, staring in. Not in a scary way, but in a pitiful way. He wasn't running but floating, and he kept up with the car with no problem. After maybe two minutes, if my granddad's top speed got to like 50 miles per hour, he suddenly vanished. Like he was there, then he wasn't. And it's not like he could just leap into the undergrowth, because there wasn't any. After that, they spent the rest of the trip asking people about it to see if there were any events in that area. Nobody knew of anything. And recently, 
We looked up the town and showed mom pictures, and she said it looked nothing like what it did on that trip. Also, she looked into it and found there had been other sightings on that stretch of road in the past of a figure exactly as mom described it, and even people who had drew pictures of the figure described the same figure. Some even speculated it was the ghost of Bonnie Prince Charlie, who escaped to safety on that road to the Isle of Skye wearing clothes similar to those described by my mom and other people who had seen it. So yeah, that's my mom's story, and a bloody odd one at that. The road was the A75 near Kirkubri. The A75 is apparently the most haunted road in Scotland, which I forgot about until I looked it up again. This was when I was around 16 years old, so I was asleep in my small room on the top bunk of our bunk bed, with my brother on the lower bunk. My room was very much a box room, so it was around 2 meters wide, give or take, and opposite my bed was my bookcase slash library. I had a lot of interesting books on there and would frequently read from them every day. So one night I was asleep when I suddenly woke up in the middle of the night for no reason, but my room isn't as dark as it normally is, so I looked towards my bookcase, and there right in front of me is a large man, completely green and glowing. His back was turned to me, and in my sleepy state, I was just curiously watching him read my books. He then noticed and turned around to face me. He then gives me the warmest, friendliest smile ever. I look at him for a few seconds, then smile back, place my head on the pillow, and go back to sleep. I remember feeling a bit scared, but the way he smiled at me made me realize he was just interested in reading books, as for his features, he was a tall, bright green, white male. Once, me and my friends, about six of us, including me, were taking a shortcut through a graveyard park at night. It was basically a cut through two separate main roads with the park going through a fairly large block in between, but the cut going from one end to the other should have taken like three to four minutes max. Anyway, as we're walking, we get to the part of the park that's right at the thickest concentration of graves in the vicinity of the really old church. The first one to see something was a different friend of mine, who usually gets a bit nervous in these situations. He said he saw a pair of weird, shining eyes staring at him from a silhouette. One of our friends points their phone torch at the place he was pointing at, and we see it's actually just a mildly scary statue of a stone angel above a grave. We dismiss it. But as we keep walking along, more of us seem to keep seeing it, I'm the third person to notice it. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice it, this weird featureless blank face and this entirely grey shifting human silhouette, with the only thing setting it apart being those burning bright white eyes. I nearly screamed right in that spot. Each time we checked it, it was still only a statue or some other sort of graveyard ornament, but after that, it seemed we'd been walking through the area far longer than it should have taken, and by the time our fourth friend noticed the strange thing, we broke into a run. Six grown guys were just full-on sprinting through the path of the graveyard at night like scared little kids. We all kept running without looking back, but the longer we ran, the more it felt like something was reaching out to us from behind. Even though we should have been near the end, it seems to take a few minutes of running before we even start to see the light of the street on the other side of the gate coming into view. We double down on our run, and my first athletic friend literally jumps over the gate. A second before I reach it as well, I turn my head back slightly, and I swear some way in my mind or other, whether it was a delusion or a part of the hallucination, I see the full form of this grotesque, expressionless figure barely 50 meters behind us. I say this because within the next second, I and the rest of our friends had jumped over the gate into the lighted street, but when I turned back to look at the last spot I'd seen, there was nothing there, no graves, no statues, not even a tree that I could have mistaken. It was just an empty, open spot on the grass. When I was about six or seven, I can remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a blue ball of light floating above me. It was weird. It slowly moved around, and the light was non-buoyant, meaning it wasn't reflecting off anything. This is what is known as an orb. It happened every so often that the seven-year-old me made a functioning gun out of my Legos to protect myself. I never got to be a real-life Ghostbuster because every time I saw the orb, I was in shock. Every time I saw the orb, I told my mother, and, rightfully so, she thought I was full of shit she eventually got fed up and told me, fine, I'll sleep in your room tonight and prove to you there is no orb. That night she slept in my room, and as always, I woke up to see the orb floating above me. I built up enough courage to open my mouth, but the only words that came out were mom? My mom eminently responded and whispered to me, shh, my name, don't move. The ducking weirdest part is that when we both spoke, the orb stopped moving as if it could hear us or had some sort of conciseness. Then, after a brief moment of silence, it began to move again. I don't remember what happened next. I think we fell back to sleep, or we were in so much shock that we passed out. The next day, I tried asking my mom what it was. She didn't have a single clue. 
Not only was it my first C? I told you so. Moment, but it showed the younger me that adults don't know everything. This whole experience still makes me question everything in the world. I really do think there is more to our universe, but we can't understand it and probably never will. When I was younger, I had a rocking chair in my room, right at the foot of my bed. I woke up one night and sat straight up. Then I see a large black woman in pioneer looking clothes, wearing an apron that looked like mismatched pieces of cloth kind of stitched together. Her hair was covered in a sort of bandana. She was rocking and knitting or stitching something. And clear as day, with a southern accent, she said, go to sleep now, baby, nothing to worry about, I'm right here. And the instant comfort I felt made me lay back down and feel so safe. A few seconds pass, and then the rational part of my brain hits, wait, who the hell is in my room? She sat up again, and she was gone. I didn't feel fear or even anxiety. Her presence brought me such peace that, even years later, I wonder if it was a very vivid dream or a soul passing through the night, watching over me.